I'm joined now by Amanda Poor, who's swimming in her senior season for the Maris Red Foxes. So, Amanda, you grew up in California, you raced in California all throughout high school. What was the decision to come all the way to the East Coast and race for a school so far away from home in Maris? So, I already kind of knew I wanted to go East Coast. I wanted to get out of, Cal out of California, uh, mainly for the seasons, and I just loved like how different it was. Um, and so from there, I kind of like was looking at schools that I fit into, starting at like the conference level, and then choosing the schools that I thought might be a best fit. And then actually, like when I walked onto campus, I thought this school and the team particularly were really like the selling factors. Gotcha, gotcha. So growing up from a young age too, you see most athletes compete in sports like soccer or basketball, uh, maybe volleyball or softball for a woman. What was the decision for you that, not really the decision, but what sort of led to you gravitating towards the pool and becoming a swimmer? So I actually like tried softball and I tried soccer, but I was more of like an individual sport kind of person. And I started swimming because I wanted to do junior guards, which is a program over the summer that you need to qualify through swimming to get into. Um, and it's run by the lifeguards. So I like knew I had to pass a swim test and I, wasn't really a swimmer, I'd say, before that. Um, and so it turned into just trying to pass the swim test and to continuing to stay on the swim team, even though I pretty much cried every day for the first three weeks after practice. Um, but I stuck with it and I never ended up quitting, so. That's, that's a great goal to kind of get to <laughs> with that, with that yeah. lifeguard point. So just going off goals, are there any goals that you specifically, on a personal level, have for yourself this upcoming season? So after a year and a half of not racing, I think this year, for me at least, I just want to have fun and not beat myself up over like the little things which I've done in the past. So I definitely want to just like enjoy this last season with the team and have fun racing um, and just getting up on the blocks and kind of like forgetting everything. And if I go best time, then that's awesome and that's a bonus. But if I don't, then at least I can look back and say that it was a really fun season. Well, you mentioned too the fact that you did have a year and a half off of just not racing. So tell me, what did you do to kind of stay in shape and stay ready for when the time did come to finally get back in the pool? What did you do to stay ready? So at school, there wasn't much to do last year um, besides just going to the gym by yourself. But over summer, um, I went to like a CrossFit gym at home a few times a week. And then I also like swam as much as I could, mainly open water swimming. Um, and then I worked lifeguarding over the summer. So I had a lot of like training on the job, I'd say, like running, swimming, and just random things, I guess. So fast forward to this past Friday, you finally have your first race again. So long since you were in the pool competitively racing, what were the emotions and the feelings that were just going through you at that time, finally getting in a competitive race again? So I think everyone could agree, and like everyone kind of fed into the excitement of racing again, and so, because everyone was so excited, it made me even more ready to race. And I just like loved how like much sportsmanship there was on the deck. And I mean, we were winning, which helped for sure, but it was just really good to see everyone racing and happy and excited to be finally swimming again after not having a season last year. Mm -hmm. And congrats on the win. Thank and you. I know that you also finished in second and third in your two events. So what do you think of the team's overall performance, you know, getting that win in your first race back? Um, I thought it was awesome. I think it definitely like we knew we should beat them going into the into the meet, but it was awesome like seeing everybody race and do like go pretty fast, even though we just finished preseason. So it was definitely encouraging um, at this point of the season. And now this coming Thursday, we have a race against Fordham, which is not in our conference, and they're typically faster than us, but. Hopefully we carry that into the next meet and keep the excitement going, especially like into our conference meets. It'll be a good measuring stick for sure. And you guys also had a coaching change this year with Anthony Randall yes. now taking over. The first coaching change ever in Marist Swim uh, in the program <laughs> history. So, yeah. you know, what is that like as a senior now to be going through a coaching change, you know? As a, you, you, you were used to one coach for so many years mm -hmm. and now all of a sudden you have Anthony Randall taking over. So I was praying for a coaching change. Um, our previous coach was very into the more old-fashioned way of swimming and swimming a lot of yardage but this new coach he's very like forward with the sport and we do a lot more dynamic type things in the pool and 
he just brings a whole nother mindset to the team and is really trying to like help us figure out what makes us a team ourselves. Um, and I think like through that talking, it's brought us closer together as a team, which like our previous coach would never have done. Um, but it's just like exciting. And I think he's going to do a lot better job of recruiting. So although we haven't won the MAC in the past five years, I say after like a 10 year winning streak, I think we'll start to win again. And I know one of the things that, that Coach Randall has stressed early on in his first season as the coach is that he wants to build a culture, set expectations, and just have goals that you know can kind of be followed. So you as a senior, one of the upperclassmen on the team, how do you feel that you can contribute to building that culture? So actually the seniors, um, we all came up with like a team mission statement, I guess you could say. Um, and that's going to be what the coach like tells like, I guess what the recruits would buy into if they're joining our team. So I think that was part of our contribution to helping the future classes. And hopefully, like, at least from us, the underclassmen understand the culture of the team and how it's been, even though the freshmen and the sophomores haven't really even practiced at all. So now that they're kind of, like, seeing that, I hope that they continue that into the future. That's amazing. Amanda, thank you for joining me, and good luck the rest of the season. Thank you.